All right, hey folks, we are on week number eight, day number one, which is pitches on the treble clef, and this time we are going outside the staff. So getting started here, we are gonna review just a little bit. So remember, the staff is made up of five lines and four spaces. The treble clef is going to tell us the order of the pitches on the staff, as well as the overall sound of the pitches. Please remember that treble, treble clef notes are generally said to be higher sounding. Now, as we've learned previously, there are different levels of those sounds on the treble clef, but generally speaking, they are a little bit higher in pitch. So for our note strategies, <clears throat> we are gonna start off with our line notes. We have every good boy does fine, which is our line note strategy. Please remember that we take the first letter of each word to name the lines uh, as E, G, B, D, and F. The space note strategy that we use is face, uh, where we assign one letter to each space. And when using strategies, we always start at the bottom of the staff. That's very, very important. So please make sure that as you are using these strategies, you remember that we are always starting at the bottom of that staff. We can use our hands to remember the pitches on the lines and spaces. If we turn our hand so our palm is facing us, we notice that we have five mostly parallel lines right there. You've got those arrows showing us that we have, generally speaking, parallel lines. Between our fingers, we are going to have four spaces. So what this does is this allows us to touch our fingers and be able to say which ones are which. If we label the pinky side down here as the bottom, we can use our strategies by labeling each finger and space as the appropriate letter. And remember, like I said before, this only works if you start from the bottom of your hand. We always have to start at that bottom up over there. So the main part of the lesson here today is talking about going outside the staff. So in addition to the lines and spaces, pitches exist outside the staff. There are strategies that we use for outside the staff pitches, but first we have to think of the staff as a house, which is where the pitches are going to live. So we've got this kind of house outline right here. Uh, there are four pitches outside of the staff that we are going to be focusing on coming up here. So we're going to begin at the top of the staff. Now remember, this is considered a higher pitch. As you go up above the staff, you are still going to be getting higher. It doesn't change. It all stays there. So using our house analogy, we can imagine that the outside of the house uh, has structures on it that help direct rain away from the house. We know these things as gutters. So up above the staff right there at the very top of the staff, we are going to imagine that we have those gutters outside of the house. The pitch that sits right above the staff, it is touching the top of the staff, is called high G, using the first word of that strategy. So just like all the other strategies, if we have a word, we take the first letter of that word in order to name the pitch that we have. So you can see that whole note right there, we have high G, at the very top of the staff resting on the very top line. It is above the staff. So moving to the other side of the staff, we recall the pitches are located at the bottom of the staff. They're considered lower pitches. Now you'll see here that I've drawn a couple of steps right here because we think of the lower level of the house still above ground. This is typically known as the downstairs. So the downstairs is going to be at the bottom of the staff. The pitch that sits right below the staff, as we can see right there, it's touching the bottom of the staff up underneath, is called low D. As we take the D from the downstairs, it's the first word, therefore it is the, uh, excuse me, the first letter, so therefore it's the name of that note. So we have to talk about a new structure here called ledger lines. So normally speaking, the staff consists of five lines and four spaces. However, we can extend the staff up or down by using these things called ledger lines. So a ledger line is a small line that extends the staff either up or down and is only attached to the pitch or pitches that are using it. It does not always exist. Now, this is exactly why our staff is five lines and four spaces. 
we don't always have those ledger lines. If we did that, we would wind up with an infinite number of lines and spaces, depending on what instrument we are playing, how high or low it can play. So to make our uh, lives a little bit more manageable, uh, people long, long ago decided that five lines and four spaces was going to be the common accepted version of the staff. Now, as we had instruments that can go very high and very low, we invented something called ledger lines, uh, which will extend the staff. It's like creating another line or space above or below the staff without having it be permanent. What this does is it helps us to be able to play all the different pitches that we need for the various different instruments without having an excessive number of lines and spaces to look at. For some of us, I can imagine that already looking at the five lines and four spaces is a little bit tricky. Now imagine if we had 10 lines and, and different nine spaces, right? How would that look? That would look very overwhelming. So like I said, long ago, the people who originally thought this out decided that they were going to condense things down a little bit and add options to extend the staff up or down. So ledger lines can appear by themselves or uh, stacked on top of one another. Each ledger line follows the musical alphabet either going forward or backward. So to elaborate on that a little bit, if we are thinking about the staff and we have every good boy does fine right there, and then we have F, A, C, E. If we think about it, if we're starting on E right here, the next place that we can go is a space note because we're moving from line to space. So if we go E, it moves up by one to F. Moving up again, we have G. And then we go back to the beginning of that musical alphabet, A, B, C, D, E, and F on our top line right there. So going forward through the musical alphabet takes us higher on the staff. Now the opposite is true as well. If we start at the top of the staff, which does not work for our strategy, so do not get me confused here, folks. This is just an example of the musical alphabet, okay? If we start on the top line, and that's our F, if we move down one, we have E, D, C, B, A, G, F, E. So we can see that as we move lower on the staff, our musical alphabet goes backwards. All right, so this, this is a way that you can kind of think about this and you can find any of those notes just by simply counting through the various different lines and spaces. Now remember, this only works if you go line to space or space to line. It's not gonna work if you try to go E, F, G, A, B. That's obviously not correct because we have all kinds of different things going on there. So the, the lines are still what they're supposed to be from those strategies. However, the musical alphabet can help us when we go outside on those ledger lines. So let's dig into ledger lines here a little bit, folks. So we still make use of our house analogy. So when you're doing this, you don't necessarily have to draw the house on your staff. It's just a way to think about it so you can remember what's going on and have these kind of uh, visual and um, mental cues to help you to remember all these different notes, because there's a lot of them. So if we're going above the staff again, this time we're going to be imagining the storage space that most houses have on the upper level. Sometimes it's creepy and like, you know, movies and stuff like that. There's sometimes scary things up there, stuff like that. It's called the attic. Now, maybe your house at home, if you live in a house or your apartment or whatever doesn't have an attic, this is an imaginary house. So we can make this house whatever we want. Personally, my house doesn't even really have an attic. It has a, a, a space above where they have all the insulation. It's not really an attic. It's just there. Uh, so this imaginary house has that big open area that we have come to think of as the attic. So it's up there above the staff. Now, we've run out of lines and spaces here, so we have to use a ledger line. So it can't just float in the air up above the staff. That doesn't work because otherwise, we don't truly know where that pitch is going to be. So the ledger line for high A, using that attic uh, as our keyword, uh, has to have a ledger line up there to show us exactly where that A is going to be. Now, if it was without that ledger line, could we figure it out? Perhaps, 
but it is significantly easier to know for certain when it has that ledger line. The same can happen on the opposite side of the staff. So we're still using the house analogy. We come to the portion of the house that's typically found under the house, but it's not the full open area inside your foundation. Now my house doesn't have one of these. The very first house I ever lived in did. Uh, it has something, it's raised up a little bit in this kind of smaller area where you might store things called the crawl space. So the crawl space is going to be down below the house, but it's not fully at the very bottom just yet. It's raised up a little bit. If any of you have crawl spaces, perhaps you've explored that like I used to when I was living in the very first house when I was uh, a young, young boy. So the pitch that's located under the staff on the ledger line uses the strategy crawl space, but we call this middle C. Now this is something really important to keep in mind here. This is the only note that we have, the only pitch in anything that uses the adjective middle. So one great way to remember that below the staff note on the ledger line is by thinking, okay, it's the only one that has this, it's middle C. And you can really quickly remember that that's where that goes. Now I can hear some of you thinking, why isn't middle C the C that's on the staff towards the middle of the staff? There is a very good explanation for that, but I'm going to ask you to wait on that line of thinking for just a little while here. We will learn about that later on, but not just yet. So I'm gonna keep you in suspense a little bit, keep you coming back for more. All right, so let's review here a little bit, folks. I know that there's been a lot going on here. I know that uh, we've said a lot of things today. So the staff is made up of five lines and four spaces. That's the basic staff that we have. And the treble clef tells us the order of pitches on the staff, which strategies we're going to use in which order. Uh, it also tells us that the pitches are generally said to be higher sounding, although there are some variations to this. The line note strategy using that hand staff, every good boy does fine, where the letters E, G, B, D, and F are the individual lines. The space note strategy, again using the hand staff, goes on the spaces F, A, C, E, spelling out the word face. Now, as you saw, I always have to start at the bottom of the staff. The strategies absolutely only work by using it starting at the bottom of the staff. So pitches do not exist only on the staff. They can be located outside the staff as well. To remember this, we want to think of a house. Now, when we get back to school, you might occasionally see me do this to give you kind of an idea, a, a little reminder to think of the house. So the one that's up on the top of the staff, if I go like this, and then I give you the kind of bad sign language for rain, you might be able to think, okay, cool. The one that's on the very top of the staff is the gutter. It's the high G. So now if we think about the house again, and we're going below the staff, if I'm walking this way, we are going to be thinking of the downstairs, that low D. Now ledger lines, like we get, just got done discussing, extend the staff up or down and are attached to the pitches uh, or just the single pitch that are using them. The pitch above the staff on the ledger line, above the staff, is inside that house. We think of it as the attic, which is labeled as high A. The pitch below the staff, if we crawl into it, that is the crawl space, labeled as middle C. And once again, please remember that middle C is the only pitch that we have that uses the adjective middle. All right, so now the next thing that we're going to get working on is a little bit of practice with this. Hopefully this made sense. If you have any questions about it, please feel free to either ask me or head back through the video. That's the luxury of doing a video uh, that you can look at any of those parts that you might need to again. All right, so we're gonna get on with the next part of our lesson here. So let's go ahead and mark this slide complete and head on to our next portion.